Hello health champions! The vagina is one of the most remarkable, resilient, and misunderstood structures in the human body. Despite centuries of cultural taboos and scientific neglect, modern medicine and research have begun to uncover the fascinating intricacies of this organ. As an elastic, self-regulating, microbiologically rich environment, the vagina is not just a reproductive passage, but a dynamic system central to female health. From childbirth to infection resistance to sexual function, its capabilities are vast and deeply rooted in biological sophistication. Understanding the science of the vagina not only dispels myths, but also empowers individuals with knowledge that can lead to better health decisions and a deeper appreciation for the human body. Anatomically, the vagina is a muscular, tubular part of the female genital tract that extends from the vulva to the cervix. It averages about 7 to 10 centimeters in length, but can expand significantly in both length and width. This adaptability is one of the vagina's most extraordinary features. According to Dr. Jen Gunter, a Canadian-American gynecologist and author of The Vagina Bible, the vagina can expand up to 200% of its normal size, especially during childbirth or sexual arousal. The walls are composed of mucosa, smooth muscle, and connective tissue, giving it the strength and flexibility needed to accommodate penetration, menstrual flow, and even the passage of a baby during delivery. The structural design of the vagina reflects a perfect balance between strength and flexibility. It is lined with a type of mucous membrane that secretes fluids to keep the environment moist and balanced. These fluids are not merely for lubrication, they also play a role in the immune defense as they trap and help expel pathogens. The inner lining, or epithelium, is stratified squamous tissue, meaning it is multilayered and constantly regenerating. This tissue regenerates rapidly to withstand friction and potential trauma, which explains why minor injuries to the vaginal wall heal quickly and rarely result in scarring. One of the most compelling aspects of the vagina is its remarkable elasticity. Elasticity is not only about stretchiness, but about how the tissue can return to its original shape and function after being stretched. During childbirth, the vagina can expand to allow the passage of a baby something that is mechanically extraordinary when you consider the average diameter of the vaginal canal compared to the average size of a newborn's head. This transformation is possible because of the rich presence of elastin and collagen fibers in the vaginal wall. These proteins give the tissue both strength and stretch. Collagen, often discussed in the context of skin aging, is essential for maintaining the structural integrity of the vaginal wall, while elastin provides the stretch and recoil. As Dr. Mary Jane Minkin, a clinical professor of obstetrics, gynecology, and reproductive sciences at Yale University notes, the vagina is not a loose or floppy structure, but a muscular and responsive one that contracts and returns to its natural state after expansion. During sexual arousal, blood flow to the pelvic area increases, causing the vaginal walls to engorge and lubricate naturally. This lubrication comes not from external glands, but mostly through transudation, a process by which fluid seeps through the vaginal walls from the surrounding blood vessels. This fluid is rich in proteins and antimicrobial agents, which not only facilitate comfortable intercourse, but also protect against infections. Contrary to the idea that the vagina is a passive tube, it is an active, muscular structure that participates in the sexual experience through rhythmic contractions, known as orgasmic contractions. When we examine the concept of self-cleaning, many myths fall apart under scientific scrutiny. The vagina does not need to be cleaned with soap, douches, or special products. In fact, such interventions can disrupt the natural balance of the vaginal ecosystem. The self-cleaning property of the vagina is primarily due to its natural secretions and the role of the vaginal microbiome. The vagina maintains a slightly acidic pH, typically between 3.8 and 4.5 which inhibits the growth of harmful bacteria and supports the growth of protective bacteria, mainly from the lactobacillus genus. The vaginal microbiome is one of the most studied microbiomes in the human body after the gut. According to Dr. Jacques Ravel, a microbiologist and one of the world's leading researchers on the vaginal microbiome at the University of Maryland School of Medicine, a healthy vaginal microbiome is usually dominated by one or more species of lactobacillus, especially L. crispitus, L. jensenii, L. gasseri, or L. inners. These species help prevent infections like bacterial vaginosis and yeast overgrowth. Unlike the gut microbiome, which thrives on microbial diversity, 
the vaginal microbiome functions best with low diversity. A dominance of lactobacillus ensures a stable and resilient system that can respond to challenges like menstruation, antibiotics, and sexual activity. The relationship between the vagina and the immune system is also uniquely sophisticated. Vaginal secretions contain immunoglobulins, especially IgA, which serve as the body's first line of defense. These antibodies bind to invading pathogens and help neutralize them before they can cause harm. Moreover, the epithelial cells lining the vaginal wall produce antimicrobial peptides, such as defensins and cathelicidins, that destroy bacteria, viruses, and fungi. These defense mechanisms are part of the innate immune system, which provides constant, nonspecific protection. One of the most misunderstood concepts about the vagina is its ability to cleanse itself. Vaginal discharge is a normal, healthy part of this self-cleansing process. The composition and amount of discharge vary throughout the menstrual cycle. For example, around ovulation, cervical mucus becomes clearer and stretchier to facilitate sperm movement. Outside of that fertile window, the discharge may be thicker and more opaque, acting as a barrier against pathogens. Changes in discharge are one of the key ways that the body communicates health status. For instance, Sudden changes in color, odor, or consistency can signal infections or imbalances, making self-awareness and education critical for reproductive health. Another fascinating aspect of vaginal science is how the organ responds to different life stages. During puberty, under the influence of rising estrogen, the vaginal walls thicken, and the microbiome stabilizes into its adult form. In menopause, declining estrogen levels cause the vaginal walls to thin, a condition called vaginal atrophy, and the pH becomes more alkaline, increasing the risk of infection and discomfort. Hormone replacement therapy and vaginal estrogen creams are often used to address these changes and restore the protective environment. As Dr. Lauren Stryker, Associate Clinical Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology at Northwestern University and author of Sex Rx, points out, many women experience unnecessary discomfort during and after menopause due to a lack of education and resources regarding vaginal health. The vagina also plays a role in non-reproductive systems. Its connection with the urinary system means that infections in the vagina can easily affect the urethra, and vice versa. In fact, urinary tract infections UTIs, are often linked to vaginal dysbiosis, an imbalance in the vaginal microbiome. In terms of repair and regeneration, the vagina is impressively resilient. Following childbirth, the vaginal tissues begin to recover immediately. Within a few weeks, the tissues generally return to their pre-pregnancy structure, though this can vary based on age, number of births, and other factors. The hormone relaxin, which increases during pregnancy, helps to loosen ligaments and tissues in preparation for delivery, and its decline postpartum signals the beginning of recovery. Pelvic floor exercises, such as Kegels, are often recommended to strengthen the supporting muscles around the vagina and improve both continence and sexual function. The social and psychological dimensions of vaginal health also warrant attention. In many cultures, conversations around the vagina remain shrouded in stigma, leading to misinformation and shame. This lack of knowledge can lead to harmful practices such as douching, unnecessary surgeries, or avoidance of gynecological care. Educating the public about the actual science of the vagina empowers individuals to make informed decisions and fosters a culture of respect for the body. As we continue to explore the vagina in this series, we'll dive deeper into topics like menstruation, childbirth, sexual response, menopause, and medical innovations. What becomes clear is that the vagina is not simply a reproductive organ. It is a dynamic, intelligent system that interacts with nearly every aspect of a woman's health. Its elasticity, microbiome, self-regulation, and immune defenses are not only medically fascinating, but vital to understanding the broader human body. The science of the vagina is no longer confined to textbooks or whispered myths. It is a vibrant, evolving field that combines microbiology, immunology, endocrinology, and regenerative medicine. With ongoing research, better education, and empowerment through knowledge, we can replace shame with science and turn curiosity.